let's talk about tick identification. Since not all ticks carry and transmit the same pathogens to humans and companion animals, it's really important to know which tick you're dealing with uh, when you find one attached to you, a family member, or a pet. So let's start by talking about tick anatomy. Ticks are made up of four basic parts. They have their mouth parts, also known as the head, um, which we scientifically call the capitulum. They have this shield on the back uh, behind the head called the scutum. They have an abdomen where the intestines and blood are stored. And then they also have legs. Uh, while adult ticks and nymphal ticks have eight legs, larvae actually only have six. This is a close-up view of the mouth of a tick. This barbed structure in the middle here that I'm pointing to is called the hypostome, and this is actually the part of the tick that goes into the skin. Um, these barbed teeth on, on the hypostome are actually part of what helps keep the tick attached uh, once they bite you, and that's what makes them a little bit difficult to pull off so that they don't just fall off of you. It can be pretty easy to tell male and female ticks apart once you know what you're talking about. Um, female ticks have a very short scutum on their back, so this, this shield is very small, um, and that leaves the rest of their body free uh, to expand. Since females need to, to drink a lot of blood in order to lay eggs, this part of their body, their abdomen, needs to be able to expand many, many, many times and uh, fully blood-filled American dog ticks, females can be about the size of a small grape, so they can get pretty big. The male, however, does not need to take a blood meal uh, because he does not lay eggs, and so he can have a very rigid scutum all over his back because he doesn't really need to swell up very much with blood. There are 14 species of ticks that are found in Maine, um, but there are really only two that bite humans commonly, and these are the deer tick and the American dog tick. American dog ticks are the largest species of tick that we see in Maine, and they're generally brown in color. The adult female has white decorations on her scutum that look like a collar or a necklace. The rest of her body and her legs are brown, and she has very, very short mouth parts. The adult male dog tick also has white decorations on his back, but these look like racing stripes or suspenders. He also has very short mouth parts and the rest of his body is brown. It's important to know that nymphs and larvae stay mainly around the nests of their hosts, so it's really rare for us to see them. However, it's fairly common for humans and, and our pets to encounter, come into contact with all stages of the deer tick. So we can start with the larva or baby tick over here on the right hand side. Like I said before, uh, these ticks only have six legs, unlike the older stages of ticks, which have eight legs. Um, larval black or deer ticks are almost clear. Um, and they're very small, about the size of a period on a piece of paper. The nymph, or teenage stage of, of the tick, has very long mouth parts, a black oval scutum, and an abdomen that's almost clear. Uh, these nymphs are about the size of a poppy seed, so they're very small as well and hard to find when they're crawling on you and if they bite you. Adult males have an overall dark body color and their mouth parts are very, very short. Um, usually, we don't run across uh, too many of these biting humans. However, this is the adult female deer tick. Um, she's got a red colored body with a black oval scutum and very long mouth parts. It's fairly common to see adult female deer ticks and nymphal ticks biting humans and companion animals. This picture shows the size difference between all the life stages of the deer tick. We've got the female, who is about the size of a sesame seed, and she's the largest. The male is slightly smaller than her, followed by the nymph, which is quite a bit smaller, has this clear body, clear abdomen here with a black scutum, um, and is only about the size of a poppy seed. 
the larva is absolutely tiny and is almost clear, so they're very difficult to see. You can see, compared to this ballpoint pen, exactly what size those might be. And then we can also look at the size difference between deer ticks and dog ticks. Dog ticks are far bigger than deer ticks, so we can see that the female um, dog tick is quite a bit bigger than the adult female deer tick, and the same with the male. Uh, the male dog tick is far bigger than the adult uh, male deer tick. Um, it's important to be able to have an idea in your head of how big these ticks are um, and what you're looking for when you do a tick check. You're really looking for something that's absolutely tiny, like this little tiny nymph. Thank you for reviewing this with me, and I hope that you now feel confident uh, in your tick identification skills.